Hello, butterflies. Hello, hello. Welcome to Monique's Tarot. How are you, butterflies? As we welcome in this energy of the full moon in Aries. To get things started here, let's just burn a bit of Palo Santo. Welcoming in those messages from the spiritual guides and clearing out that energy that no longer serves us. As always, butterflies, thank you all so, so much for your likes, subscribes, for your connections across all of the Butterfly Family spaces. Thank you to those of you that are subscribed to the newsletter. You receive messages from me via email right to your inbox each and every week. And also you can receive sometimes surprise readings. So make sure that you subscribe via the newsletter. And for those of you that are listening in via the podcast, reading right at moniquestarot.com or medium, Quora, wherever you are. Thank you all so much for entrusting me on your spiritual journey. The energy of an Aries full moon is an energy that is very powerful, a charge forward energy. And within tarot, Aries is represented by the Emperor card. So the Emperor is all about structure, those foundations of kind of seeing the lay of the land, seeing where things are, but knowing exactly how to cooperate with others. Now, Aries is ruled by the first house. So in being the first house, it likes to be first. A lot of competition comes with this Aries energy. Sometimes there's this extreme energy and this high kind of anxiety that comes with Aries at times too. So make sure with this first house energy that you're really thinking about maybe those mishaps you've had in your life. There's a lot of fiery, beautiful energy with Aries as well, especially across physical appearances. And with it being in the first house, it brings this energy of beginnings. If you think about the zodiac as a whole, Aries is the first and our zodiac season actually starts within Aries. So there's kind of this newness, this freshness, which is really interesting at the top of the equinox, the fall equinox. We just stepped into fall season, into Libra season. So now this is bringing this full harvest energy of a new beginning. So you may feel like you're kind of starting anew, you're starting afresh and you're starting with some fire, especially with Aries, with this full moon, being a cardinal sign, there's that energy of being a self-starter. So you have all the things, the fall season equinox, the beginning of Libra season, and this full moon in Aries that just kind of brings forward this charge forward energy. Now with Aries being a fire sign, there's a lot of passion and willpower that comes with the energy of Aries. So you may find yourself feeling more independent, having more individual opinions, and this is a really good opportunity for you to really heal in your own self. How can you start to do those things that maybe bring out the best parts of you on your own? What are those conversations you can have or ways that you can push yourself that really bring you into this new energy? Another thing to know about Aries is Aries is also ruled by the planet of Mars. So there's this competition and aggressive acts that are definitely going to come about. This is also a time of fiery passion. So perhaps in those relationships, in those romantic moments, if you're looking to connect with your partner or partners, depending on how you identify, if you're looking to really have that deep connection, this can be a beautiful time around the full moon, around this harvest time to kind of ease into some of that fiery energy and bring about more passion. Now that we know a little bit more about the full moon in Aries, let's get into a guided message from the spiritual guides. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Aries. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Aries. Hmm. There's an interesting visual 
uh, coming along of a roller co coaster. Um, just a very high roller coaster, actually. Almost like the view of going up the roller coaster, like looking down or looking up uh, from the bottom of the roller coaster that's coming in. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Aries. We have two butterflies here. The first one, actually, um, I'm going to keep it in the direction it is. I'm getting this energy and message of coming out of a cocoon uh, that's coming through, uh, which is interesting kind of coming into fall season because it's kind of the beginning of the cocoon season. But there's this coming out of the cocoon that's coming through. And then there's this more watery kind of aqua butterfly that's coming through here, almost as if this butterfly is... Uh, kind of disintegrating the past. It's like these speckles of its wings that are coming off, almost as if it's passing through a season or passing through like um, a veil of some sort, kind of coming from one space to another. And then there's this coming out of a cocoon energy. With the cocoon, it says, I'm thankful for many things and my gratitude attracts abundance into my life. I'm thankful for many things and my gratitude attracts abundance into my life. And then in kind of breaking through this veil, it says, in my heart, I know that good things are coming my way. In my heart, I know that good things are coming my way. It's almost as if to break through, to kind of shed some of this old, come into this energy of breaking through this veil. It's like you're letting go of some particles of yourself, but there's still the majority here. You're still with the energy of the full essence of you, but there's some things that needed to be shedded to know to step into all of these good things. And it also says here, I'm thankful for many things and my gratitude attracts abundance into my life. It's like acknowledging what you have is actually giving you this abundance. Acknowledging the gifts you bring is giving you this abundance. It's this energy of thanks, of gratitude, knowing that this transformation to come out of this cocoon, almost as if there's like the sunlight that's coming down like this open blessing like an open opening that's happening uh where light is just starting to shine through and break through it's like it's been long awaited uh very beautiful kind of angelic energy that's coming through here we can bring in some angelic energies uh, to the table today but it's definitely pulling in like this blessing of energy where it's your time it's allowing you to be in this graciousness and know that good things are coming your way Mm, really powerful energy there. I'm actually feeling called to bring in some Oracle of the Muse energy, which I haven't brought in in a while. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides from the Oracle of the Muse. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the Oracle of the Muse. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides from the Oracle of the Muse. So we have expansion here, which is a beautiful tapestry of a woman where her dress is actually coming up into this flow above her. If you can think about like those silks that people kind of uh, do silk tapestries on, um, kind of like a silk acrobat where they're tied up in the silks. There's this butterfly of transformation, like some of you are getting ready to step into some expansion here. And the energy is really coming from this base root chakra with this red, this beautiful red here. And this butterfly is actually very gemmed. It's adorned. It's almost like 
there's an adornment that's happening from the crown down that's bringing in this rainbow of energy. Again, it says, I'm thankful for many things and my gratitude attracts abundance into my life. There's just, it feels like there's this very strong energy of the need to be gracious, the need to acknowledge, the need to maybe not have every single thing, but knowing that every single thing will be covered and every single thing will be taken care of through the graciousness of what you have right now. Hmm. Let's get energy for in my heart. I know good things are coming my way. Calling in messages for in my heart. I know good things are coming my way from the Oracle of the Muse. They have this broad energy was pushed out of create. So there's this call here to continue to do the work um, in this creation energy. It's almost like go back to those foundations with this red jasper that's coming out. Go back to the foundations of why you originally started to create some things. And you can see here with this kind of red gem color um, with red jasper, it calls you to root. The base root chakra is all about getting to the core of who you are, getting to the core of why you do things, getting to the core of why you're actually connected to the things that you do. And actually, um, depending on the time that you're listening to this, uh, this week I actually just put out a reading via the newsletter, just a mini reading. Um, and also uh, via the community, so you can find that on YouTube or you can find it via Substack. But it has this energy of the collective is being called to really reestablish your foundations coming into this full moon in Aries energy. And seeing that it, this energy of Aries is so fiery, so powerful, there's a need to be balanced with that fire. There's a need to be balanced with that power. So make sure that you're using this energy wisely, that you're not just kind of dishing it out because as mentioned in that reading um, that you definitely want to go back to and see that many reading, there's a need to make sure that you're not leading with a tough hand, that you're not leading with kind of a fisted hand, that you're leading with a hand that is open to new ideas, open to new concepts, and allows others to also come in and bring their ideas to you as well with all these good things that are coming your way. Let's just get one more oracle. I actually um, feel called to bring in some heart energy with all this Aries, all this fiery energy that of creation that's happening and expansion. It's happening very fast, which definitely matches um, this morning's reading. Um, the Eight of Wands was something that came through. So there's a lot of fast energy that's coming in with this creation and expansion that you want to be prepared for, butterflies. Calling in loving oracle energy for the full moon and Aries. So you have this woman with this very reserved look on her face here. It's almost like this woman... Um, She's looking out. She's not quite teary, but you can see she has some streaks of just kind of light exhaustion, some streaks of just kind of looking out, maybe being hopeful, just like almost as if she's wiped her eyes for some time. But it's at the point where it's almost like she's used to it. She's kind of numb to it. She's not um, expecting anything less like someone who's just nothing can surprise them, which some of you might be in that energy at this time where she's not surprised by anything. It's like nothing phases her. Thank you, spiritual guys. Nothing is phasing her at this time. But there's these beautiful pink flowers that are all around her. And it says here, an enchanted world is available to you if you want it. Just as the oak tree is hidden in its seed, the god goddess is within you. Reason devoid of feeling is merely harsh judgment. So listen to your heart and move beyond the boundaries you have placed around yourself. It's time to step into your power and create a world of bliss. I'll read that again. An enchanted world is available to you if you want it. 
Just as the oak tree is hidden in its seed, the God goddess is within you. Reason devoid of feeling is merely harsh judgment. So listen to your heart and move beyond the boundaries you have placed around yourself. It's time to step into your power and create a world of bliss. So this is given the energy of choice. Like you have a choice in how you do or do not step into this energy, this opportunity that is presented to you. You have a choice in what you create. You have a choice in the direction of how you expand things. And you have a choice in how you accept the abundance that's happening here. So it's almost like the spiritual guides are saying, don't get too complacent. Don't get so comfortable that you feel like you know everything. You, you've been here and done that. You're creating something new. You're in a new phase, especially with this full moon in Aries. This is a new beginning, a new opportunity to start anew. So this is a fresh start. So even though it might look similar, it's not. <laughs> it's totally different. It's a totally different time is what the spiritual guides are bringing through here. Hmm. Yes, yes, spiritual guides. Okay, let's get into your base tarot here. And I felt called to bring in some angelic energy. So let's start there. And then we'll also bring in some other energies as we feel called to throughout this reading. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Aries. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Aries. It's almost as if as I'm moving through this energy, I can feel the base root. Uh, sacral chakra expanding. I can feel that energy expanding within my system, starting on the feminine and expanding out to the masculine. Um, there's this energy of having balance between the two, uh, which actually feels like a call to the collective to have a balance between powers, to have a balance between the two, the feminine and the masculine. We'll see specifically um, what messages the guides are trying to bring out with that. But there's just something here about the expanded energy from the feminine over to the masculine, but from the feminine in um, the, the power of the feminine. So it's a very strong energy that's being passed over to the masculine uh, realms at this time. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon Aries. Aries is a very uh, combative energy, so I actually feel called to like cut through it. I was going to go through um, with some golden energies, but Aries is a very competitive energy, <laughs> which usually needs more of the truth for it to kind of uh, settle in. So we'll use the Truth Seeker deck here. So within your elevation of spirit butterflies, I'm seeing the nine of swords, the chariot upright within your healing. I'm seeing the wheel reversed within unexpected surprises, the five of wands within your personal life. And I'm also seeing the four of pentacles reversed in unexpected surprises. So without any clarifiers here, I'm seeing that some of you may need to really think about your health this week, review everything review every document especially for those financials with the four of pentacles there's a need here to kind of conserve your energy and conserve your time conserve your money it's like use your resources wisely is what's coming through here personally there might be some outside opinions that are coming into your personal life uh, we'll get some clarifying energy but with this five of wands upright it's just showing that there could be some tensions uh where that you really need to think about like some other people almost as if there's someone in the middle that's kind of a ringleader with some of these conversations that's bleeding into your personal life with the five of wands 
there's a thing about timing here with the wheel within work and business endeavors. So there's something that's happening here work-wise that needs a little bit more time. I'm also seeing within your healing though, there's this energy of charging forward uh, despite what else is happening here. It's like to see the chariot here, it's bringing forth this energy of you are determined to heal. You are determined to see the best outcome. You are determined to see things through. And I do see here that there's a little bit of anxiety that's happening around here with the Nine of Swords. Almost as if you're worried that the worst is going to repeat itself, which we talked about that energy a little bit in the beginning. Almost with this woman here, it's like, she is worried that um, she's seen it all. Like she thinks, oh, this is, this is just the same thing. Like it's just gonna happen like it happened before. But the guides are saying it's not. This is different. That energy is very clear of, it's not the same right now. It's very different. So there's a little bit of fear and anxiety from things of the past that's definitely coming through. And so let's cut through some of this energy to see where it's tied to with this full moon of Aries. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Aries, clarifying elevation of spirit, this next level that you are shifting to this week. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for... Elevation of spirit, the nine of swords... Outside interference was what first came through audibly. So supporting the Nine of Swords is the Nine of Swords reverse. So there could be a, a past Aries, Gemini, a past <laughs> Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius with this Knight of Swords, a masculine energy, someone of the past, just a little bit younger here, uh, really sharp mind, really sharp way of kind of going about things. This Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, young masculine has this um, energy of almost as if they know everything, but with the high priestess reverse, it's saying that they don't quite know everything, um, almost like someone who... Um, kind of uh, speaks before they actually have the experience that's coming in. And there's something here about your connection to this person uh, that's starting to really um, give you this um, unrealistic fear because this person of the past, if this is making sense, this person of the past, it's almost as if they were um, speaking from um, an inexperienced place, maybe even a mentally immature space um, where they acted as if they did have everything together. And so it's making you feel as if you were off. I can see here, there's something here about a group of friends. Maybe there were three friends, um, three um, people that were working together, maybe working on a project or you were working together to set some kind of foundation or working together to kind of get your own selves together this um aries um i don't know why i keep saying aries because it's definitely gemini libra or aquarius but there might be something about an aries that's within the circle someone that's very fiery very um uh, communicative maybe they have aries within their chart but they're a gemini libra or aquarius there's something about this group here and how you all were working together um and this one person who maybe wasn't as experienced that is bleeding into your present moment with the fountain card here it's showing that the choice is yours anything can happen here and it's important for you to understand your foundation and role within this group how were you contributing to maybe some of the discourse that happened and also how did you maybe give this person this gemini libra or aquarius a little more credit than they deserved the fountain card is bringing in this fresh new beginning where it really breaks through everything so there's a call here to make sure that you acknowledge the work yes Yes, but it's time to learn and it's time to move on. It's time to kind of see what was in the group for what it was and to shift into something new. The fountain brings that fresh start. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides, clarifying energy for healing, 
Calling and clarifying energy for healing with the chariot. Calling and clarifying energy with the chariot. There's a very, um, there's like a resolve that needs to happen across conflicts this week. Not surprised to see that with Aries energy. Again, Aries is ruled by the planet of Mars. So it brings in the competitive forces. It brings in the aggression. It brings up the kind of tough conversations that need to happen. So you're healing right now and you're charging forward with this chariot energy. I can see that butterflies, but there's still things from the past that need to come up with the moon showing. It shows here that there is a queen of wands of the past, um, an Aries Leo or Sagittarius, someone very beautiful, and very, um, very uh, gravitating when she walks into the room, a feminine, or if she's not a feminine, someone who maybe is masculine, but just leads with that feminine energy. There's something here that is still needing to be resolved around this queen of wands. There's still some secrets that need to come up. And I can see that they are coming up this week with the moon. With the five of swords, it shows that there will be a head on discussion, a head on conversation, something that will be discussed something that is not yet resolved, a meeting of the minds, and it won't be you alone. It's interesting to see healing with this five of swords energy and also personal life. So this could pop up unexpectedly within your personal life in some way and just having these two energies to see conflict within healing and then the five of wands within your personal life it shows that you might not find the normal spaces where you could find that resolve, where maybe if you went to your partner for comfort at this time, they might not know exactly what to say because it's showing that this is a battle of the past with the moon card. This is a, a conversation, a tough discussion that has nothing to do with what's presently happening, but it needs to come up. So utilize this chariot energy Use that as a way to really move forward, to get past the situation and to think about what is being revealed here with the moon card. What is being said about this queen of wands that maybe you don't want to hear or what is being said about this queen of wands that has nothing to do with you. <laughs> think about that energy and allow that energy to pass through while you're charging forward, while you're working hard. It's almost like this is going to be a tough move forward, um, a tough moment for you to really establish what is good for you and not just what is good for the Queen of Wands. The attractive. <laughs> what is good for the attractive? What is good for the person that is maybe more um, beautiful in some ways, but it's showing here that you have the success and balance. You have the determination and that's helping you stand out here. So stay with that energy. Calling and clarifying energy for work and business endeavors. Calling and clarifying energy for work and business endeavors. Words don't hermit, don't shrink, don't go in, don't hide are coming out this week <laughs> even with all this conflict don't hide don't hermit calling and clarifying energy for the wheel within work and business endeavors for the full moon and aries with the ace of cups you might not be as attached as you'd like to be to your work this week i see that some of you are just feeling a little bit tired um, there might be some things that you need to revisit here with the Six of Swords, some things that you thought you got away with from that you were done with um, that you might revisit with the Six of Swords being reversed here. There's an offer that's going to be coming in with the Four of Cups, but some of you um, with this energy, you might not be able to see it right away. It's important to make sure that you have your eyes open if you're feeling like you're in this energy of oh, it's not quite the time to start things or you're not as attached to your work. And I'm not seeing any energy that is showing this is a week of rest. So let's get a couple more clarifiers in here. Spiritual guides can 
You bring in clarifying energy for work energy this week, this detachment. What is what are the butterflies needing to circle back to to review to connect with? What are you investing your time in, butterflies, with the seven of baskets being reversed? Um, it's like you have these emotional choices and options of how you could possibly spend your time. Um, now, with the seven of baskets energy and also the emperor energy, which is Aries energy, again, this week is a week of foundations. And we saw in the beginning that there was creation energy and expansion energy coming out. And also this energy of this possible belief that things seem the same and look the same, but they're really not. So it's almost like the spiritual guides are saying, look, we see that you're just kind of bored a little bit. You're just kind of in the energy of what's happening, but you really need to recognize what's around you. You really need to step into what is happening. Just stay with the process here. It's time to set a new foundation. It's almost like you're starting over, which is something that continues to come up with this Aries full moon, but it's definitely this energy of starting over, starting anew. It's a fresh start and it's an interesting fresh start. It's not like this high powered, all feels good fresh start. This feels like a fresh start of really reviewing the choices of what you have and making a tough decision might have some conflict here but a tough decision that's actually really needed for you calling and clarifying energy for the full moon in aries with the five of wands calling and clarifying energy for the full moon in Aries, for the five of wands. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, it definitely felt like this energy of Healing and personal life were very connected. So we have supporting personal life. The five of wands is supported by the five of coins reversed. So you're coming out of tough times with the five of wands reversed. You're coming out of needing to be so dependent on others. Um, with the chariot reversed, this is showing here that there's been some pullback energy. Like you're not maybe interested in charging forward as much as you'd like to within a relationship. Almost as if maybe um, you're taking just a little bit of a pullback. You're not maybe completely breaking up. Some of you may be, but there's this energy of just kind of pulling back where you're just like, you know what? I'm not really trying to be all in your energy this week within your relationships. And it's causing some of you to have this energy of the Nine of Swords where you're overthinking things, you're over-processing things. And we saw this Nine of Swords energy within your elevation of spirit. Now, there's something here about the elevation energy where a lot of what you are doubting right now is because of what people have said in the past. Maybe there was someone within a friend group that said something about your personal life here that has really gotten in your head, that's put you in this place of not um, feeling as if you wanna move forward or um, go with your own gumption, kind of trust your own self. But the guides are saying that you're coming out of those times. You're no longer in this time of like, depletion where maybe in a relationship like your health was weak or your mental was weak like you've come out of that and to come out of that there's always this system and time of shift where your system has to um get used to the new you know your system has to get used to uh being healthy where it's not in that panic mode so allow yourself yeah and here's the nine of coins that's just coming out here um self-independence so allow yourself to step into this energy of newness even though there might be some other people trying to push back on the newness that you have within yourself stay within that energy 
Remember what you came through with the five of coins. Remember how tough things were. Remember how uh, disappointed you were to be in that position and acknowledge where you are now with this fresh nine of coins energy. This five of wands feels like choice background energy where people are going to say what they want to say and it might get into your head a little bit, but it's your choice to charge forward here at the chariot. Again, there's something about the uh, Queen of Wands and Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. There's something that's getting ready to come out, that's getting ready to be revealed um, either um, from her end or she's trying to reveal it about you. But there's something here about just allowing that energy to be, to not try and fight it because you are in a space of moving forward. So it's like you kind of have to get past some of this energy this week and don't hide is what the spiritual guides keep saying. Don't hide, <laughs> don't try to stay in the house. Um, not to say like there's no way of escaping it, <laughs> but really it's like, it's gonna happen. There's a lot of conflicts across the board and it doesn't always have to be this big, huge blow up, but it's just the power of Aries energy. It's gonna bring things to fruition. It's gonna bring things uh, to the forefront. Calling and clarifying energy for unexpected surprises with the Four of Pentacles reversed. There's an energy here with the past Knight of Wands, so an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, someone that's maybe younger than you. Uh, some plans that you wanted to make here with this Knight of Wands. Uh, maybe there was some type of deep emotional connection or a connection that was just very passionate, very fiery. There's some plans that you wanted to make with this Knight of Wands here. And I'm seeing that there's some remembrance that's happening um, around these plans with this Knight of Wands, the Six of Cups being upright. So there's a lot of memories that are happening here. There's something here though about the finances not quite being where they need to be, the health or something not, not quite being where it needed to be. There's an energy here of just not being the right time uh, to maybe spend the money for this travel or spend the money for these plans. Let me know how this resonates with you butterflies, but there's just an energy here of making sure that you actually are ready to revisit some of these past plans. Are you ready to do some of this travel or do you need more time? Again, there's this energy across the board of kind of taking time for yourself this week with this full moon in Aries with such fire. Um, everyone kind of being out for themselves <laughs> a little bit with Aries energy. Um, this is a fruition period with the full moon. So this is your charge forward moment. And sometimes when everyone's charging forward at the same time, not everyone can lead at the same time. So it's important to allow that space for you to be led by the calling of your spirit for you to be led by your spiritual guides, by those ancestors that are constantly and continually charging forward for you. Allow them to lead you through this full moon and Aries energy. Let's bring in a few closing oracles here, butterflies. Let's actually bring in a few love oracles. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Aries. So I'm seeing reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Yeah, we saw that Six of Cups related to that past Knight of Wands, that Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. There are these memories of the past here that are happening. Maybe some past travel. Maybe um, someone's finances were a little bit off or something or their health was a little bit off. There's like this revisitation that's happening here. I'm also seeing soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate that's coming out here. Let's bring in a few more. Very soon, clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Yeah, there's that energy where we saw the seven of 
uh, cups that was coming through. It's almost like some of the decisions that you're making within your career as um, centered as they are within yourself, are they affecting others? Are there others that could maybe benefit from a conversation? And then we also hear have stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. So if you're in the space of looking for partnership or seeking partnership, remember to be open to the process. Part of being open to um, love and romance is allowing for that self-growth to happen first and to know that in partnership or partners, depending on how you uh, define your relationships, within partners and partnership, you will find yourself learning so much from one another. And the first step in learning about one another is first understanding and knowing yourself so you know what you have to share. Let's bring in a few more oracles here, butterflies. Let's bring in a wild offering oracle. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides, from the wild offering oracles. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides, wild offering oracles. We have here divine timing. It says the divine brings things in the timing that we need. Nothing comes before we're prepared nor leaves too early. May I always trust your perfect and holy timing. Yes, divine timing. And we have here gratitude. We have, saw that in the beginning. I'm thankful for many things and my gratitude attracts abundance into my life. And it says here, gratitude. Find just one thing that you feel grateful for right now and let that gratitude pour through your body. It's a healing balm like the warmth of the sun. It says in here, I, in my heart, I know good things are coming my way. It's like that message is repeating of gratitude. The message is repeating to continually be grateful for what is happening in this moment. And I've actually really been enjoying this goddess, African goddess rising deck. I love the imagery. I love the energy of these ancestral energies. So just bring in one of these calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Aries. We have Queen Ya Asantiwa. Queen Ya Asantiwa. Level up. <laughs> she's a beautiful throne and seat in front of her. She has a machete uh, that is she's, she's carrying in her right hand, her left hand behind her. Beautiful rainbow of colors and the number 39, which translates to 12, which is all about communication and creativity, how you're opening up that imagination within yourself. And also the 12th house is always that space of refuge, that sympathy, kind of like, what are the motives that you have? What's the innocence? What are the things underneath that are coming to the surface? Also, there's that energy of like a lot of luck and miracles that comes with the number 12. So let's let's read from the passage here. Queen Ya Asantiwa. So Queen Ya Asantiwa, she's the goddess of leveling up the Ashanti in Ghana. Her temple is the queens. Her element is the bush. Queen Ya Asantiwa was a mother farmer and the warrior queen who led the war of the Golden Stool. The Golden Stool throne of the Ashanti Empire holds the regent's Kra life force energy. Queen Ya Asantiwa's guidance, raise your standards. A leap forward for one is a leap forward for the tribe. Your choices can raise the frequency of your community and the planet. Your choices can raise the frequency of your community and the planet. I feel like that message has been resonating all day and through the readings this week of it is your choice on how you level up in this new chapter, this new opportunity, and this new beginning. The embodiment says it's time to level up. This is your season for a quantum leap. 
You have prepared for this. Life does not have to be linear and neither does growth. A quantum leap feels drastic and huge, but the secret is that the quantum leap happens little by little. So what inspired action helps you level up? Connecting to spirit with rituals, movement, meditation, and visualization is a great start. The goddess declaration for Queen Ya Asantiwa is divine timing is on my side. Divine timing is on my side. We just saw that divine timing. The divine brings things and the timing that we need. Nothing comes before we're prepared nor leaves too early. May I always trust your perfect and divine timing. Yes, beautiful, beautiful energy. Mm. Wow, Queen Yasintiwa, beautiful energy. And we're just going to close things out here with a unicorn oracle. Powerful, powerful energy. We have two. So we have adventure. Dare to do things differently. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. It looks the same, but it's not. Dare to do things differently. Manifest your travel dreams. Move to a new location. And I'm also seeing here cycles from the spiritual guide. Cycles. Everything has its right time. <laughs> Honor the cycles of your body. Tune into the moon's magic. Butterflies. This energy is so divinely guided with timing. I hope that you all have truly, truly enjoyed these messages from the spiritual guides for this full moon in Aries to send you on your way. Just burning a bit of Palo Santo thanking your guides and spiritual guides for entering into the space, for protecting us with their energy, for allowing us to take the time to have the sacred moment of honor for all that they have provided, all that they have given, and all that they have yet to journey us through and take us through. Until next time, butterflies, speak soon. Bye.